Hello one, hello all, it's the most gothiest ghost of them all, Kespa in the flesh. And it's time for a review of Sampha Lahi. Singer, songwriter, Sampha is back after six years. He is finally back and I have been asking for this. If you've been following my TikTok and social media, you have seen that I have been hinting towards my yearning for a new Sampha album. And due to the fact I loved the process so much, which was the debut album, I was on the edge of my seat waiting for him to return again, and we finally got it. I've always loved Sampha's approach to Future Garage with a mix of UK bass, Neo Soul, and Alternative R&B. But this time we are receiving more with Sampha's futuristic style here. It definitely appears more brighter here in opposed to the process, which definitely had more of a dark feel to it. Like you definitely had more of an ominous type vibe. But on here, he is more in a state of looking for uplift and being uplifted. Sure, you do have songs about heartbreak, spirituality, mental health, drinking, and just yearning for that inner peace and human connection. And also love, whether it be romantic love or love for his daughter, like on the track Can't Go Back. So back to the sonic palette of this, while we are getting futuristic vibes here, and it is lighter, we are also getting elements of Western African music on here. Western African folk music to be exact. Like on one of the singles leading up to this, Spirit 2.0. And the synth patches here complement the mental state of Sampha and like what he's feeling, and the uplift, the ascension, the spirituality portion. And there are also moments that sound very spiritual, but also very orchestral as well. With blends of acoustic guitar, skittering rhythms, Sampha's beautiful, wondrous voice, and even some live drums as well. And the rhythms are so beautiful. They're so intricate. And Spirit 2.0, which I loved as a single, love as a cut on this album, which shows more optimism here and more uplift as where he's saying, even when he's descending, when you are falling, people are there to catch you. Love is there to catch you. And it's just so optimistic in such a pessimistic mind state that we normally find Sampha in. So due to what Sampha will unveil here through his tumultuous times, it is a very nice conceptual refresher. And he definitely seems more determined here in terms of just being just broken on his last album. And not to say that that was a bad thing. I think the self-expression and the performances on there were great, very captivating. But on this album, to differentiate from the debut, Sampha seems to be more ambitious here in terms of mentality, but also in terms of the instrumentation as well. He's more determined to find healing. He is more determined to find prosperity. So due to the themes I have listed earlier, it's really no surprise that he would have a song on here called Jonathan L. Siegel, which is in reference to the book, Jonathan Livingston Siegel. It's a book about dreamers, potential, and seeking out life's purpose, which plays a role in one of these songs we will get into later. And also with being an outcast, which I feel in a good way, Sampha actually is. It's not every day you get someone as passionate and as creative and as focused as Sampha when it comes to today's R&B. Not to take a shot at other R&B artists, but I do think Sampha brings a lot more in comparison to others. Also, I feel the lyrics are more direct this time around, but more in a way that's easier to follow, but still keeps me on the edge of my seat. And also, as I mentioned before, Sampha is also pointing out societal ills, which is linked to part of his mental health, and seeking embrace of someone that he has once had in the past, even if the one who could heal him probably isn't the best for him or for each other, for that matter like on the track Dancing in Circles. And also I love the melodic ticking loops on the metronomic piano. To me, I feel it simplifies Sampha's patience in a way. 
with these dreary piano lines that just break into different variations through the track with these passionate, creative, lovesick lyrics. Suspended is also another highlight for me. Suspend. The multi-layer vocals and the way they elevate over these serene pianos, I almost feel like I'm ascending with the instrumentation. And also Sampha breaks into these speedy, melodic falsettos. It's kind of like a half rapping, half singing in a maddening fashion. And then we get the second hook that just breaks into like this bustling transition. And also being lifted by this woman's love, but simultaneously drowning in sorrow. Where the lyrics hold so much pain, so much love, so much poeticism, where he is just yearning for things to be like the way they were before. And there's also Jonathan L. Siegel, which is probably the most epic and maybe the most multifaceted track on this album. That has these fragmented keys over these atmospheric backing vocals that just get louder and louder. There, there's certainly a crescendo to be noticed here. It's so surreal, it's so angelic, and I feel like it's moving towards me as it's singing to me. With these blissful choral vocals grouped with Sampha's angelic, harmonious vocals, and the melodic vocals are deepened and modulated, but they sound very compelling and great, and also provided by these bubbly bass lines with a beautiful acoustic guitar ending. There's also Only, which I loved as a single, Still Love Now, with probably the most infectious hook on the entire album. Only, 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 only. Where Sampha realizes that he himself must find this evolution that he's looking for, this change he is looking for, but he also notices that he is not isolated in this purpose. There are other people who are on the same journey as him. Can't Go Back, as I mentioned earlier, has these, it feels like internal layered refrains where he's just straight up rejecting the voices saying, can't go back. And he is just saying like, even though I can't go back and I can't fix my errors, let me just move slowly, move more wisely, and just make a better future for myself. With these pounding rapid drums, lush orchestral strings, and these sporadic mini vocals just flurrying through the track that go into these wild sporadic breakbeats, ending it off with this beautiful passionate sax at the end. After that we have Evidence, which is a beautiful tie-in thematically to the album with these elegant, serene pianos that create a dreamlike sequence, soaring backing vocals with a lot of reverb hand percussion. Almost reminds me of a dub reggae track in a way. But back to the thematic focus of the album, where numerous times John Livingston Siegel is mentioned on this album and due to that track being finding purpose for the meaning of life, and prospering where Santha has realized that this person is the evidence for life, the evidence for living, the evidence for the purpose, which is very touching and very beautiful. I don't know exactly to whom he is saying this to. It could be his daughter, it could be a love interest, but the, the thing is he has found the purpose which ties into one of the elements and one of the topical themes of the John Livingston book and I'm just gonna say that I feel I always love where that one piece that one conclusion ties into what this album is going for I do think, however, the album should have ended at Evidence due to that being the tie-in, the conclusion to the album. That would have made a lot more sense. But also, I do find these tracks to be kind of weak. I think What If You Could Hypnotize Me probably has one of the weakest hooks on here. Doesn't really go much of anywhere. And the last two tracks basically fizzle out into nothing, unfortunately. But, 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 but. 
This album is definitely Sampha's best yet, and that's not to say that his first album was bad, it was actually great. But Sampha has definitely outdone himself with the pen game, the production, and also, as I said before, and I will keep saying, the thematic focus and the tie-ins and the tangibility, the emotional potency did not fail on this album. And vocally, too, I see there is more variation here. There is more variation to be had. And also, the message. The message is on point, too. I... <clears throat> I am feeling a 4.5 out of 5 on this album. Very endearing, very beautiful, very lovely album. If you've not heard it, please do. But if you have given this album a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? And why? And that's it. Caspa, Gothic Ghost, Sampha, Lahai, till we meet again.